I'm a sandwich. More specifically, I'm part of the sandwich generation. Adults sandwiched between the challenges of caring for children as well as aging parents. And I'm not alone. More than half of African American caregivers are sandwiched as well. So when I was asked to take part in a collaborative of 10 news organizations tasked with finding elder care solutions, I enthusiastically said yes. In this edition of the series, I examined some of the challenges faced by black caregivers. And I didn't have to look far. Let me introduce you to my 85-year-old father and his primary caregiver, my husband, Gary. Happy birthday to you. It was on my dad's 84th birthday and the height of the pandemic. Happy birthday, dear Papa. That I vowed that this birthday would be the last we would celebrate outside a nursing home window. Yeah. There you go. As time went along, you could tell he was, he was missing his family. But bringing dad home would mean Gary would become dad's primary caregiver. We talked about it and said, okay, this is what we need to do. How hard was that for you? That was the easiest part. He's family. He's always been family. And uh, I, I missed him. While the decision was easy, the isolation of caregiving is not. Our elder alarm and my dad are Gary's only companions during the day. Hey. <laughs> Good morning. How you feeling? I'm doing better. Hmm? I'm doing better. You're looking like a champ. That's my daddy. He's always in good spirits, but not always this engaged. That's the nature of Parkinson's disease and dementia, as it robs its victims of lucidity and independence. Let me get you a new shirt, buddy. Dad now needs help with everything from meds and bathing to dressing and toileting. According to the Family Caregiving Alliance, black and Hispanic caregivers are more likely than their white peers to experience what it calls high burden caregiving, with 57% of black caregivers and 45% of Hispanics providing care at least 30 hours per week. So this is now my full-time job. Is that full-time job fulfilling? Sometimes. I think the fatigue and uh, the frustration of not having normal outlets, normal social outlets. Actually, he has no social outlet. He's not attended one social function outside our home in almost a year. A little anxious, a little overwhelmed sometimes, but you realize that there's no other solution. Not for us. Dad's level of care would require a live-in aid, which is not financially feasible. So I take over Dad's care on the weekends. I can't think of the last time we went on a date or we went out to eat or we went to a movie. We just don't have the luxury of those things. And that's, that's a major toll, let the truth be known. What resources would you need to help make your job easier? a second shift worker to be able to get out of the house for a few hours a couple of times a week to do something for yourself and not have to feel guilty about it. Do you know any other men who stay at home and take care of an elderly relative? Not at this time. Not one single person? No. That has to be isolating. Well. Yeah, it is. And therein is the challenge of caregiving. But we know our home is the right home for my dad and for us. Okay, I gotta go to work, okay? You going to work? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love you. I love you too, baby. All right. Mwah. I'll see you later. Okay, take care. We just wish there was more support for families like ours. Now, our collaborative is tasked with finding solutions to caregiving challenges. And my colleagues, Adria Walker with the Democrat and Chronicle and Tyronda James with Minority Reporter, investigated a solution that's really working well in Los Angeles. The University of Southern California is home of the Los Angeles Caregiver Resource Center. 
It hosts support groups and caregiver meetings on the USC campus, and it's now collaborating with African American churches to provide services to parishioners and community members. The center also makes social workers and counselors providing a wide range of services like referrals, education, and training events, as well as respite care. You can read more in the Monday online edition of the Minority Reporter and the Tuesday online edition of the Democrat and Chronicle.